So we're on AliExpress looking for bizarre components for an upcoming project, and we stumble across a series of really cheap SSDs from a company called King Spec, which kind of sounds like a knockoff of Kingston. And this raised a couple of questions for us. One, how can they be cheaper than massive multinationals like Samsung or Micron who enjoy the industry's best economies of scale? How would something like this perform? And perhaps most importantly, should anyone trust what is probably the most valuable aspect of their computer, their data, to a relatively unknown player? Oh, oh, and one more question. Have you ever heard of our sponsor, Glasswire? Glasswire lets you see your current and past network activity, detect malware, and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device. Use offer code Linus to get 25% off at the link below. First things first, the on paper specifications, which getting our hands on was actually not as easy as you might think. So the official page lists neither the controller, so that's effectively the brain of an SSD that controls how data is managed on the NAND flash, nor the exact type of NAND flash that was used by this drive. Furthermore, when we cross-referenced whatever data was out there in the wild, often on third-party sites, we actually found a ton of conflicting information. Everything from different NAND types, MLC versus TLC, to wildly swinging sequential read and write ranges. In some cases, we actually found conflicting information within the same page. Now we were able to determine at least that the controller on our particular unit was probably a DRAMless model from Maxiotech which is J Micron's SSD division that was spun off into a separate entity and that it's probably an MK8115. But we decided to leave confirming it until all the testing was complete, just in case our autopsy found that the patient was deceased due to the autopsy. Okay, so for those of us who are not quite up to speed on what makes an SSD tick, aside from the like, you plug it in and it makes the loading look faster, um, and why being DRAMless is important, here's a quick primer. When your operating system sends a write request to an SSD, it actually assumes, even though it's 2018, that it is talking to a hard drive and sends data in logical block address or LBA form. Now SSDs, they don't do LBA instead storing data in blocks, which each contain four kilobyte pages. So that's where the flash translation layer inside the SSD comes in. It converts LBA requests into actual block and page addresses, acting as sort of a table of contents. What's more, each NAND cell has a finite number of times that it can be overwritten. So there needs to be logic inside the SSD that takes care to spread out the wear evenly. This is a process known as wear leveling. Further complicating this process though, an individual page cannot be erased from a block. So to remove part of the data from one block, the whole block has to be moved over to a second one minus the pages containing parts of the file that are marked for deletion. Once that's done, the first block can be marked as safe to overwrite. Now this consolidation or moving around is known as garbage collection. And SSDs have at least 7% of their true capacity hidden, sometimes more, in order to help shuffle data around. This is otherwise known as over-provisioning. Now, as you can imagine, as an SSD gets more filled up with data, this garbage collection process gets more difficult because the fewer spare blocks you have, the harder it is to organize the ones that remain, especially during heavy use when it has to perform this shuffling on the fly. This is where not having a DRAM cache can hurt you. Remember that table of contents we talked about? Ideally, that gets stored on the cache. So then, without a fast way to look up where what goes, 
writing data to a DRAMless SSD ends up being kind of like going to the mall without a directory. And then imagine you're in a hurry, like uh, you're doing random writes of small files all over the drive, which actually happens a lot during regular usage. Or, or does it? So let's look at some performance here. No! Oh, 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 lordy, oh, oh, wow. Oh, oh, the humanity. Sorry, okay, enough of that. Let's actually look a little closer at those numbers. In sequential reads and writes from a clean state, everything here actually looks fine. But the same can be said of an SD card. And when we ran Windows on one of those recently, the results were, well, less than ideal. But where our Kingspec SSD falls flat on its face is where small size transfers come in. So we're talking being beat by an order of two and a half times in some cases. And then embarrassingly enough, this model we're comparing it to right here is also a cashless model, this time from Corsair. So it seems to be a mix of the who knows what NAND and the cheap ass controller along with an unexceptional firmware. And that is with the drives empty and trimmed. This situation can only get worse as the drive fills up. Game level load times could be seen as a redeeming quality. Those are fine. But honestly, by this stage of our testing, they just aren't enough for KingSpec to be getting any kind of recommendation for this drive, especially given the mixed Amazon reviews that are either basically, yay, works great, or died quickly, no response from the RMA team, with someone even going as far as to set up a complaints page about KingSpec. The final nail in the coffin is the price. So our no-name SSD is cheap, sure. At the time we ordered it, it was the cheapest 512 gig that we could find. But cheap is not the same thing as good value. So given that something like a Samsung 860 Evo can be had for, complete with five-year warranty by the way, about $10 more, then I guess the conclusion is this. I recommend the Kingspec P3 512. I strongly recommend it as a gift for someone you don't like. Speaking of things I recommend as a gift, although in this case for someone you really like, Massdrop's Sennheiser HD 6XX headphones. This is one of Massdrop's all time best sellers and why wouldn't it be? Over 40,000 of their members have picked these things up to date and people continue to want them. It uses the legendary HD650 drivers as a base to deliver a balanced mid-range and natural sounding base. It's got a detachable six foot cable instead of the 10 foot cable on the original. This is based on the community's feedback and it comes with support from Sennheiser. So check out the link below to join the drop today. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the uh, video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should definitely join. To be clear, we're not really recommending this one either. We're just saying this one is really bad.